Can your child be the next wonder entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. If we get started right now, let's have a chat from the little black couch. Entrepreneurs are unique. They embrace the chance to overcome obstacles, solve problems, make the world a better place, and dictate their lives on their own terms while they take on risks. These are their stories. My name is Aaron Stewart, and I have been researching and living entrepreneurship for the past 30 years. And I now welcome you to The Little Black Couch, a journey in entrepreneurship. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the safe confines of The Little Black Couch. My name is Aaron Stewart. Thank you for being here today. I am super excited about what we have coming up. I have put together, I've been working hard, and I've put together a eight-part series on how we can foster, those are my notes you're hearing, how we can foster entrepreneurship in our children and in the younger generation if you don't have children. There's a lot of really cool research that we've uh, been able to kind of work around and get through on how to develop young people into becoming um, on their own, um, individuals, uh, problem solvers, uh, passionate about um, their own interests, uh, a willingness to share, and a willingness to serve. And all of that we're going to sort of incorporate into this eight-part series, as it looks, this being the first part of it, um, and I'm super excited about it. As many of you know who have been following me here on The Little Black Couch know Um, When I was doing my research in uh, entrepreneurship and finishing up my doctorate, we did an international study on the effects of education on one's entrepreneurial perception. And what we learned there was fascinating. Obviously, that education plays a big part in changing somebody's perception of the entrepreneurial opportunities around them. So education is always a really big part of developing an entrepreneur. But what types of education... Uh, are most important. That became sort of the next question when the research was done. So we delved into that a little bit. And then we got into goals and tasks and teams and all that sort of the the organization around goal setting and uh, hopefully accomplishing goals. And we learned a lot of really cool stuff about uh, goal setting and how to best Uh, encourage us to get to those points. So that will be incorporated into this discussion. And uh, and then we got into sort of what is what is behind somebody who is a really good entrepreneur? Is it nature or nurture? And that gets into some really cool research about neural pathways, about how we learn and become efficient and develop talents. There's a super cool book called The Talent Code that I read I was trying to remember, the first time I read it must be, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. It's fascinating. We don't know a lot about the brain as of yet. Don't let anybody tell you differently, but we have learned some things. And one of the things that we've learned is that talent is something that probably has more to do with what we learn and how we learn as opposed to any sort of natural ability that we're born innately with. Like we have the opportunity to develop into extreme talented people with little to no natural ability. So that's fascinating to think that any one of us who finds a passion someplace can turn that into a really cool talent and perhaps into a business where we can assist others in solving their problems. So that's a very exciting thing. So so part of all of this is, I, I wanted to kind of run through sort of the discussion topics that we'll go through over the course of the next eight shows. To kind of give you an idea, one, we're going to delve into this talent code, talent code and how we learn and kind of the process behind that. Then we're going to get into motivation. Uh, the third show will be about encouragement and we'll get into practice. And there's two types of practice that I want to get into, especially when they're younger children, as opposed to as they get to adolescent age and growing older, we change our, we change our approach a little bit. We'll get into coaching. There's two different types of coaches that we need here. And parents may or may not be able to accomplish both. So we'll get into that. We'll get into how we develop and foster passions and let our children's imaginations run wild. And we'll get into how we help them develop empathy and serve others so they always are in this uh, mindset of how can I solve problems for other people and see how we can align those back up with their passions and their problem solving skills. And then the last thing we'll get into is about the business side of it. When do we introduce the boring business side of being an entrepreneur? And is there easy ways to do that and sort of ease them into it so it doesn't 
uh, kill their passion, destroy their creativity, and frustrate them. Let's bring them in safely and quietly and carefully, um, and then maybe develop some ideas on what they can do to delegate and push off the things that they don't necessarily enjoy. So that's sort of the plan for the next eight shows. So first I wanted to dive right into this idea of being able to learn a talent and becoming efficient at it. What we learned, what we learned from the research is through education, we can, find, we can uh, change somebody's perception into entrepreneurship. And that's an important first step. So education is important in our children and making sure that they are getting good education. I sadly saw some folks on one of the discussion boards I'm on over the weekend discussing how proud they were that they were high school dropouts which is completely frightening when you know the, the research. You want people to stay in and learn as much as they possibly can because they develop these abilities, these traits to learn, and learning becomes a big part of being a very successful entrepreneur. So whether it's a good education or a bad education, if we can encourage our children to learn as much as they possibly can, then we are going to foster a, a better opportunity for them to develop their entrepreneurial skills. Okay, so that's the first thing. Make sure that education is a big part of the home. Now, what type of education? Whatever they're passionate in. I have really no problem with, we've got some children, we've got a child that loves uh, science and history and those sorts of things. We've got a child that just loves mechanics and engines and fixing things. And we have a child that is just a, crea uh, just a creative artist and loves to draw and do amazing things. We shouldn't care. Let's just let them be and pursue something and learn something and, and then pursue it and go and let them bounce around and try different things and just let them explore and have fun. So any kind of learning is wonderful in the home. Let them do whatever. I, it can be origami. It can be whatever, whatever they want. If they want to learn how to fix a toilet, take it apart and fix it, great. Let's let them do that. Let's just let them explore. If they want to learn how to dig a really big hole, great. Let's let them do that. I, I had a son that was interested in PVC pipe and fixing sprinklers. That's one of the things I hate most in life, but he always would come out and we'd watch YouTube videos together and figure things out, right? So those, those educational experiences are important. Please make sure that they're getting those. I'm not so concerned about necessarily the grades they're getting, but that they are having fun in the learning opportunity. So don't beat them up and withhold any sort of encouragement when they are learning and trying to do something. Shower them with encouragement. Okay, so that's sort of the first step on, on, on this path. The reason we do this is um, as humans, we develop talents uh, and efficient actions through uh, thinking and practice. And so what we've learned, and again, this, there's a wonderful, the, the Talent Code is such a beautiful book. And so I highly recommend that to everybody. And I'm so grateful. I was actually in a mastery class for golf where one of my uh, mentors suggested that we read this book. And I'm so glad I did because it's changed a lot of the way I think about not only my re own research, but parenting and how I actually even treat myself. So as I was going through and uh, thinking about this, we need to understand that how the brain works. So when we do start doing tasks over and over again, our brain is about being efficient. Our brain is about saving as many calories as possible. So it wants to create these neural pathways that are super efficient. And the way it does that is by any time we fire up electrical impulses to do an action, the more we do that action and the more utilize that neural pathway is, the more uh, this insulation is built around it. It's called myelin. And uh, as we build this myelin around it and it insulates and protects this neural pathway, that pathway becomes more efficient. And, and the way we're able to thicken that myelin is not by doing the same thing over and over again. It's actually done by doing one thing and then uh, correcting any sort of action within that. So failure actually develops a much more um, efficient neural pathway, which makes us much more talented. And let's use that as well. The more efficient our neural pathways become, the more talented. And those are air quotes. More talented we become. So that's a very exciting thing when we think about our children and helping them out. So we definitely want to allow them to try everything they can. And we want to make sure that we are encouraging them so they are doing all kinds of stuff. And where we have expertise, we can show them 
um, little corrections they can make. And when they make those little corrections deliberately and try to get better, that's where the myelin gets thicker and the neural pathways get more efficient, if that makes some sense. And we'll get more into that. I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but we as parents have the ability to do that and to increase the amount of failure by doing a couple things. One, we do not uh, throw a fit when there's any sort of failure. We just accept it, we offer some counsel, but we continue to encourage them to keep trying. We need to uh, detach this idea that failure equals a failure. Um, Failure is just trying that hasn't been perfected yet. And that's all we need to see. We need our children to get to a place where they're not afraid to try. They're not afraid to fail. They need to understand that it it, it is in the failing and the correcting that the talent is fostered, okay? And I hope that makes sense. So we as parents can do a wonderful job of making sure that our children are super supported and encouraged through all their failures. We do that so well when they're newborn and they're learning to walk or they're learning to eat or they're learning to talk. We shower them with encouragement. And then somewhere along the line, we get away from encouraging them until they actually finish a task, Right, And that's where this, if I try something and I fail and I don't get any sort of encouragement or any sort of accolades for that, then failure starts to feel like a bad thing and then they don't want to try as many things as they normally would. So we want to make sure that we encourage them all throughout their life whenever we see effort, right? Encourage them, keep them going. And anytime they try something and fail, we support them, we encourage them, we we try to get them to do it again. We maybe offer, if we have some expertise, we can offer some some encouragement and maybe some um, some techniques to help them do it a little bit better. That is what the talent code calls um, deep practice, right? So you'll see somebody who, for example, is learning to play a violin, and they will they will take little parts of that music and try certain sections, and they'll go very slowly and try to learn it. And then once they've got that section, it's part of them. It's part of their neural network. They can blow through that any time after that. But it was that really deliberate, slow, careful practice where they were making very small corrections to their technique that got them to build this neural pathway that becomes super efficient, surrounded by a thick layer of myelin, and they're boom, they're super efficient. So that's what we're trying to encourage in our children. We want them to fail and fail quickly. We want to then correct them so they can practice deeply and move on and create these wonderful, wonderful neural pathways that will make them talented and efficient in all these activities. When they're little and young, the main activity that we're trying to get them to do is just learn, try things, Learning is the thing. So anytime they are learning, that is where we are showering gobs of encouragement. And it doesn't matter the topic and it doesn't matter any of that. Now, obviously, if they're doing, if it's cigarette smoking, okay, we can, right? I don't want to to encourage that. Drug use, no, Let's, let's stay away from that. But anything that's positive and helpful and expands their mind and helps them to grow that is not a, uh, an unhealthy and uh, (laughs) habit-forming activity, we would want to encourage and help them to understand that, right? So that becomes the first part of it. And I am going, I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wrap it up there. We've been into this thing 13 minutes. Let's make sure that, uh, let's think about, for this, this exercise, let's think about our children and our future children or our nieces and nephews or young people around us Let's start looking for opportunities where we can encourage them when they are learning, and then we can help them um, understand that failure is a positive thing. Failure and overcoming that failure and deliberately working on whatever task they were working on when that failure occurred is what is termed deep practice. That will cause these really efficient neural networks that will make them experts at whatever that task was eventually. And that is such a huge, a, huge, a huge, super important thing to do. One of those tasks that we will be doing that with and making them super efficient at is learning and overcoming failure and trying. If we can get them to be efficient learners, uh, efficient um, individuals who keep trying no matter what and, and don't look at failure as anything other than a step towards um, being talented and expert in anything, then we have developed some very beautiful and wonderful talents within these young people. And then we can lead them towards 
um, honing these skills into entrepreneurship, which is the next step. So thank you for joining me today. This is going to be an exciting eight part series. I hope that you enjoy it. But by the end of it, we will be very, very good and have worked on our neural pathways and how we can make young people more efficient, uh, better learners, uh, more empathy, more empathetic, um, better, uh, better individuals as far as service goes, and really wonderful problem solvers, and eventually into amazing entrepreneurs. So join me on the journey from the Little Black Couch. And until next time, this is Aaron Stewart saying thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If there's anything you heard today that you enjoyed, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or subscribe to this podcast so you can be alerted when the next episode is available. Until then, here's to all the entrepreneurs out there. Let's go get it done.